Hi everyone, it's Julie from Live For Art here and in this short little video I'm testing colours for a much larger pore but I'd share, thought I'd share it with you anyway um, just about the process that I sometimes go through. So I've got a number of colours here. Um, the grey greeny colour is, a, is leftover paint that I've taken out of this container or even scraped off the, <laughs> off the table and in creating that paint colour it reminded me that I really wanted to do a larger pour of using silicon oil for a friend and those sort of greeny colours green and purple are, will be her shades so I've got uh, that one I've got, we also use some white I've got some uh, purple that is probably metallic lavender global metallic lavender with um, a touch of other colours in it as well just to darken it up a little bit I think I might have even put some dioxazine purple ink in there um, we've got um, this mauve, which is a Eraldo metallic mauve. We've got some gold, which is the metallic rich gold, the Eraldo. And then in the other cup, cup I've got to, got to put in some antique silvers and global antique silver. I'm just putting a light colour in to separate it from the purple there. So they're the three colours I'm wondering about, really, the mauve, the gold and the and the metallic silver and these other colours were, were ones that I was pretty confident about. So I really wanted to see how they looked. The mauve had been, um, had not appeared, it disappeared in some other pores so I wanted to check that out and I wasn't sure about how dark the grey would come out and the mauve. The other thing I should um, say about this pore is that it's using some leftover paints and it wasn't until I'd started putting them in the cups that I realised that I had failed to put some silicon oil in some of the newer paints. So some of these were leftover paints that I had um, had from a, some cl a class and so I just added some extra paint to it but didn't add any extra oil. So in fact there's only a very small amount of oil in three of the colours and not in none in the other three colours. So it's also an interesting experiment as it turns out as to how much oil you need and it turns out if you don't want a whole lot of cells not a lot. The oil is my uh, dimethicon, the Live For Art Dimethicon 1000 CST and you'll see already despite there only being a small amount on the painting it's already making some lovely cells and some lovely cells with rings around them as well as some smaller ones there. So I've just used those small cups, it's not really enough to, to cover the canvas. There was one other colour that I did want to use and wanted to test. And I want to share a little bit about that with you. There's a p p p pigment that I really liked and I thought I'm going to mix it up for this. I often use it in my bloom pores and I just put it straight into the pouring medium that I have for that. But in this case I tried to just mix it with my pouring medium here which was Floatrol, PVA, a bit of Liquitex pouring medium and it didn't mix in at all and so in the end I ended up mixing it with the proper mixing fluid and then adding it. So this is what it looks like when it's mixed with first with mixing fluid and then mixed with this pouring medium um, recipe and here it was when I just tried to mix it directly in there. Just the pigment, pigment particles just haven't blended in. So I learned a lesson there, it's, it's not every every pouring medium that you can add pigment directly to and the mixing fluid does have a, have a place. So it's a, it's a lovely colour, it's actually the um, this little piggy sea, sea glass and it's one of my favourite new pigments. So I put it there just to test as well as to filling up, trying to fill up some of that gap. Uh, I ended up, it ends up rolling off the, the canvas and I have to put a couple more drops on. So at this stage I haven't used any heat and I'm just getting the heat out now and putting some on just just in a few places and you'll start to see even some more cells coming up. So obviously when you heat and how much you let them grow before you stretch um, will be important but those those ones at the top left keep an eye on those because they're just tiny now but they really do stretch out into being some other lovely big cells. So the challenge here is to keep some of those cells on the um, on the on the canvas and not to lose them off. So I'm just just taking the weight back to the centre before I take it down the other side. Probably not being as precious as I might normally be but that says stretch back into shape okay as I've come, come down there. And already I know that I, I like the gold 
and that the mauve is actually showing itself beautifully in one of those cells. So I'm happy with both of those. I think the grey I have to be cautious of in this because I think it can take over as a darker colour. So I've had to really sort of stretch it out a bit to try and just cover those, cover those edges. But see how those cells have popped up? They're now down the bottom right. They were on the top left before. Um, and they're lovely cells with, with rings around them. And I find that the Lifrat Dimethicone, you can get some great cells like that. So I'm obviously just thinking about what to do and I'm adding those ex that extra colour because I really want to see what that dries like and how that colour looks. So I'm pleased with this, this piece and I've certainly confirmed some colour choices, what's in and what's out. A little bit more heat just to pull up some other little cells around there. But for me, this is a this is a good amount of cells. I, I did end up putting a bit more silicon oil in the cups for the main pour. But even watching this back again reminds me that you don't need a whole lot to, to get great cells. It's obviously about the thickness of the pouring medium as well. So I hope that that little demo has been helpful. Remember to subscribe and look forward. Mm -hmm.